This is one of the most interesting true stories from the 1920s I've heard about in a while. It involves a Hollywood studio, a lion, and an airplane. So let's go back to 1920s Hollywood. I think we're all familiar with the MGM lion. Even into the current age, before the start of every MGM movie, a lion appears in a circle and lets out a mighty roar. This is a tradition that can be traced back to the early days of the studio's history. In 1924, Goldwyn Pictures would merge with two other studios, Metro Pictures and Louis B. Mayer Pictures, to form Metro Goldwyn Mayer. The logo sequence changed a bit before and after this transitional period, so here's a brief timeline. A few years earlier, at the beginning of the decade, the logo had looked like this, just a still photo of a lion. But not long afterward, it was changed to a new format, a film sequence of a lion looking around and looking slightly confused. And the sequence was slightly updated again a bit later, showing the same lion performing a few silent roars, since, of course, this was before the talkies. The first official MGM lion was named Slats, who appeared in the logo until 1928. In September 1927, however, another lion named Jackie was set to take his place. For a publicity campaign, Jackie was to fly across the country billed as Leo the Lion, the official name for the studio's mascot, and was to be displayed so that East Coast movie lovers could see the real MGM lion in person, though once again, Jackie hadn't actually taken over yet. The reason this was done in a plane was because flying had recently become a very popular novelty, with Charles Lindbergh having just completed his transatlantic flight only a few months earlier. Jackie was placed in a cage in the middle of the aircraft, surrounded by glass, so he could be easily seen by people after the plane landed. The pilot in charge was Martin Jensen, an experienced stunt pilot who, a month earlier, had competed in an air race from Oakland, California to Honolulu, Hawaii, and took second place. Not far into the flight, however, there were problems. First of all, the load was too heavy. Not only was a huge 375-pound adult lion inside, there were also large amounts of milk and water for him, as well as extra fuel to help offset the heavy weight. But the extra fuel did not solve the problem and couldn't get the plane to climb high enough to clear the Mogollon Rim, which is a high escarpment or plateau, and strong currents didn't help things either. Jensen quickly decided that he had to crash land into some trees to lessen the impact of the crash. Fortunately for him, this worked out just as he had planned, and he was able to escape through the broken front window instead of having to go past the probably very aggravated lion. Speaking of Jackie, he was okay too, with only some minor scratches. Before going off to find help, Jensen fed Jackie some sandwiches and some water. Because he had landed in a very isolated area in Arizona, help was not easy to find. After three days of wandering, he finally found some cowboys who gave him food and lodging. I can only imagine the look on the cowboys' faces when Jensen probably told them that there was a lion in the desert. The next day, Jensen was able to find a telephone and called MGM, who immediately asked, how's the lion? A full six days after the crash, Jensen led a group of rescuers to the crash site, and MGM had even provided a lion trainer to help. Jackie had been languishing alone in a cage in the middle of Arizona. But after being found, he was fed some fresh meat and was in a good mood, reportedly. Jackie, still in his cage, was lifted onto a flat door and transported seven miles by mule to a ranch, where a truck was waiting to take him back to Hollywood. The whole thing had actually been a pretty good piece of publicity. The new studio had just started and hadn't quite made a name for itself yet, and suddenly they were in the news. With the exception of some animal rights groups who questioned the original intention of putting Jackie on a plane in the first place, the whole expedition was seen more as an exciting adventure to go and rescue a lost lion from the American wilderness. Of course, it wasn't as romantic as it sounded, since Jackie wasn't wandering around, but in fact, sitting in a cage. But for six days in 1927, there had been a lion in the middle of a desert in Arizona, which sounds so completely random out of context. And that was that. He might not have made it to New York that time around, but Jackie didn't seem too perturbed by that. He went on to become the first MGM lion to have the sound of its roar recorded for the logo sequence, and appeared at the beginning of most MGM movies until 1956, and was, by all accounts, a very good boy. So that does it for this video. 
I featured many of the photos used in this video on my Instagram account for this channel a while back, so if you're interested in 1920s pop culture and other interesting little tidbits about the 20s, please check it out. I'll leave a link in the description. Well, that's all for now all you chics and gals out there, but stay tuned for more tales from the jazz age.